I somehow managed to trick my way into one of the best fashion schools in the world. Of course, CSM. There's a bunch of hype about it in the fashion community. A few famous fashion designers have come out of it, so it's quite a big deal to fashion students, but basically to no one else. CSM is a university under the branch of UAL, which is University Arts London, so a bunch of art schools in London. And CSM is the one basically known for fashion. I honestly think I just got really lucky to get into that school, but I did go through the whole interview process. So this video is just some tips about interview and just talking you through the whole process if you're going into it. Okay, so basically what I did was the fashion textile foundation degree pathway so essentially if you want to be a fashion designer coming out of CSM you have to do something called a foundation which is what I got onto the foundation is monumentally easier to get onto than the actual degree so I'm going to talk about what happened and some tips I have for interview the foundation year is free so it's completely paid by the UK government there are three main stages to getting onto the foundation at CSM and kind of foundations in general the first one is your personal statement the second one is your online portfolio and the third one is your in-person interview which is basically just you talking about your portfolio for five minutes. So firstly, your personal statement, it actually doesn't go through UCAS. Each of your personal statements have to be sent separately to each university on their website. The only unique thing really about my personal statement, I think, was that I had a lot of work experience. So I had managed to do a lot of work shadowing at a specific company, learnt a lot about industry and sort of how they make garments and, you know, the whole sort of process from start to finish. You know, I got to see fittings, I got to be in meetings, I got to design some prints. So um, that was stuff that I could talk about that was a little bit different. I guess. The only other thing that I can think was like a little bit different about my personal statement was that while I was shadowing um, I met someone called Alice who was an amazing mentor to me at the time and told me that if you want to get into fashion it's one of those industries that's quite easy going and if you just send a bunch of messages to people on places like LinkedIn you'll probably get a response. So I did that and I did manage to get a response from someone and ended up getting tickets to London Fashion Showrooms which are invite only. So I talked a little bit about that and I think that's like the only special thing about my personal statement. Other than that my personal statement was really kind of basic. It was just like oh I did some work at Superdrug one time and uh, these are my hobbies and these are the sports I play, it's like quite generic. And then moving on to the online portfolio, so the only advice I have for this is to think about your descriptions and then also including developmental pieces. So that's things like your artist boards, your mood boards, uh, explaining the thinking process um, and then it's really just about you know, showcasing your best work, making sure that the lighting's good, taking good pictures, and then also having some personal pieces. So I only included maybe one or two pictures of personal sketches that were sort of outside of school. And I think it's important to show that your artwork is not just from school and that you're doing it in your free time as well. I don't really have that many tips for the online portfolio, it's quite straightforward. The real in-person interview, I have quite a few tips for, and I'm going to talk you through the process now. The first thing how it works is, is you turn up at the foundation building, you go and you wait in what is essentially the cafeteria. A bunch of people bring their parents, I just turned up alone with my portfolio. They make you wait for quite a while to be honest and then someone comes and they call you They'll call you in groups of I think four you end up going upstairs So for the fashion textiles foundation, which is what I was on we went to the room that I now know is where we would be as fashion students You get taken by one of the students you get there and then sitting in that room are two of the people who basically run the course. We have to put our portfolios on the table, so the only thing I brought was my portfolio and like a little sketchbook. So you put them on the table, so each teacher stands at an end of the table and they basically just work their way inwards. So each teacher times you and you have five minutes basically just talk about your portfolio. At the end they roughly give you about ten minutes to ask questions, always ask questions because yeah, I don't know, I've been told you should always ask questions, so just always ask questions. So I actually threw away a lot of my portfolio stuff because, you know, like, honestly it wasn't that great. Um, I never really liked a lot of the stuff I did. I threw a lot of it away and I was just trying to, like, clear out. I'm not really going to use it to, like, I don't know code so I was like just get rid of it but I did keep some of my favourite pieces so I'll like show you them as I talk about the interview process. I have just under 10 tips for interview. The first one is to have some sort of technical knowledge or have a specific piece that you know you can talk about and weave in like technical terms. I have this really vivid memory of talking about one of my pieces that was this really detailed embroidery that I actually threw away. I don't know why I threw it away, I can't find it anywhere so I think I did. But it was, I've got a piece that's similar to it. So basically in embroidery there's like a bunch of different knots and I remember saying to her oh it's here <laughs> okay I didn't throw it away <laughs> this is one of the first pieces I did for textiles I don't know if I can <laughs> really vivid memory of talking about this specific embroidery piece and just explaining that I used like a bunch of different knots in it. I remember mentioning, oh yeah, so this is a French knot and the interviewer was like, oh that's really interesting, not a lot of people know what a French knot is. Have some a little bit of technical knowledge or a specific sample that you know you can pop out. And then the second point I have is have some political pieces. That's another sort of area that they seem kind of impressed by, is I had a lot of these pieces that had these interwoven like political commentary sort of on them so uh, one of my main pieces or the main piece to be honest that took me like ages to make was this 
I don't know if, any, I don't know if you can see that, but it's basically a huge felted rug like a Persian style rug with Trump face on it. I remember with this specific piece, I basically had like an on tap dialogue I would use for this because I've gone through two interview processes already. And in my first interview, uh, which was Ravensbourne, I remember him asking me, so why specifically did you like melt the face? Um, and I had basically melted the face because what my school does is they get you to research artists and then use those artists as inspiration and there has to be like a direct link like if they don't see a link between the artist and your work and they'll like you know deduct marks from you basically at my school so what i had done is i had taken this artist i can't remember his name put it here so i'd taken this artist who does these amazing gorgeous persian rugs weaved rugs in like a really traditional persian style traditional like middle eastern style rug before he gets them made he distorts the design basically so he'll have it like pixelated or he'll have it melted so what i had done is taken that concept and then added trump to it because i thought that those are like complete opposites all this like islamophobic and racist rhetoric and all of his tweets and then this sort of like really authentic middle eastern style rug um, so I thought like putting them together and like fusing them was like quite like a political thing to do um, And then I remember in Ravensbourne he asked me specifically like why did you melt the face? And I was like well I didn't really specifically do that I kind of just did it because I thought it would look cool and it kind of linked to my artist But on the spot I was like well Trump has this really distorted view of the world and he surrounds himself with people that just sort of tell him what he wants to hear so he thinks he's right because he's just got surrounded himself with people that just reaffirm what he's saying but what he's saying doesn't always make a lot of sense so that was just sort of like the distortion of truth and the distortion of reality so I went really deep with it in that interview and I basically just reused that and every time I would say it I could tell the interviewer was like a little bit impressed that like I had this sort of like political background commentary. The next tip I have is to have a lot of progressional pieces. So what our school made us do is whenever we started any project was to do a mind map and a mood board, then we move off to author pages, then we would do author based experimental pieces, then we would add our own stuff and then we would do the final piece. So there were like, you know, almost six stages of work before we even had to like make a final piece. But I think that's kind of what they were looking for. So before I would take out my big pieces, I would show all of like the stuff that led up to that. I think art school's kind of like that. They like to see like your experimenting process or like especially if it's like rough, like rough sketches and you know messy painting and stuff like that. They really love that stuff. I find some like developmental pieces i don't i threw away a lot of my developmental stuff because obviously like that's the first thing you chuck away is like your mood board like you're not going to show your kids your mood board when you're getting out all of your stuff from high school but i did keep this one because i liked it this was the piece but like this is where it came from in an interview i probably would have also had a similar page to this but it was all about the author so for this humongous trump piece I would have had like this as an experimental piece. Before I even attempted this big felting, I did this little one. And this was this was literally just a copy of the artist's work. I wanted to see if felting as a medium would work for, with what the artist was doing. That was that piece. I think, I think that gives you like a rough idea of what I mean by, you know, lead up pieces. I think it's pretty straightforward. And then the next point is to have at least one really, really detailed piece. So um, I think pieces are really impressive when you can tell they took ages and ages to make. So for example, this felted piece, um, just to felt like a tiny corner will take you like 15 minutes like this whole thing i can honestly say it probably took me like almost like i'd say somewhere around the hundred mark 100 hours and then all of these had to be individually sewn on so yeah this piece took absolutely forever and i think you can kind of tell i hope you can tell by looking at it that it took a really long time it definitely shows an interview if you spend that much time on pieces and the next point is don't bring too much this portfolio was defo like full but that was it, it was just this portfolio and then maybe one sketchbook, like I could carry it, I carried it on the tube all the way to London. One girl in my interview had, she, her dad came with her and she had I think two suitcases, she was carrying like a tower of sketchbooks and then she also had like two Ikea bags. She, she needed another human, she needed her dad to come and help her bring all that stuff. It was just so much. You literally have a five minute stopwatch, like that's all you get. Once you finish your five minutes, that's it. So what you want to do is pick like your best favourite pieces chug them in a portfolio like nicely not chug and then that's it you need to be really with it and know exactly what you want to talk about so i only had like a few pieces and even with this portfolio i knew what my best ones were so i only had like five that i was like yeah i really want to show these and talk about these and the rest were like are these like 
fill time basically. The girl who bought the Ikea bags, just watching her interview, um, I think she just really struggled to sort of know where to go and there was too much to talk about and I'm sure she was like an amazing artist but there was just like so much there. Um, so yeah, just be really, really picky when you choose what you're going to bring to interview. Uh, the next tip I have is to bring some personal stuff. So I mentioned this for the online portfolio and it's true for the in-person interview as well. A lot of stuff is going to be from school because that's what you're going to do a majority of your work, right, from A-levels. But have at least like one mini sketchbook from outside. You know, if you go on holiday, sketch while you're on holiday, um, go to museums, you know, the Tate is free, just go places, sketch outside, it can literally just be anything, like a passion project basically. So I remember during the holidays I would kind of just like mood board and just come up with these like little fashion designs, none of them were good, they were all so basic, like you know, Pinterest basic, but I think it shows that you've got like a little bit of interest outside of school which is nice and you could tell that the interviewers enjoyed us having like a little thing extra as well. The next point kind of general to all interviews is just kind of like practice, but for me me, CSM was like my last interview. I'd already done exactly the same thing at Ravensbourne and Kingston at that point. The interview process for Foundation is literally identical. So I had just done Ravensbourne, Kingston, and I just did exactly the same thing at CSM. So not only does it help with like your confidence and nerves and how you hold yourself, also just content wise, I'd literally talked through the exact same content twice already. Um, so definitely if you're applying to one foundation that you really want, I'd say maybe even just apply to other ones that you don't want. I think CSM actually interviewed last. Like like just in the year in general. Talking to your portfolio especially is a really good thing to do to practice because you need to really know what exactly you want to talk about. You know, maybe even do it with a stopwatch. I mentioned this already, I think, but always ask questions at the end. So always know exactly what you want to ask. Have maybe like four, just in case someone else asks you a question um, of questions that you really want to know. And finally, and I put this one last for a reason because it's literally the least important, it's probably not important at all, but um, I'd say dress a little bit edgy, like have a little bit of flair in your outfit. This is actually what I wore to all my interviews for foundation. It just gives you a little bit of confidence when I actually got onto the course. Like, a lot of people dress really wacky and cool and you're like, oh my god, it's amazing. But some people also just walk around in like black jeans and a black t-shirt and no one cares. And then also the longer you go, the more people start wearing like tracksuits and jumpers. CSM definitely has this sort of like other culture, like very like wacky, quirky, like dress culture. Obviously it's a fashion school, but at the same time, like I think people are more interested in your artwork than what you're wearing. Really think about maybe having like a few cute accessories or, you know, dressing a little bit edgy and out there because I think that's kind of something that they value. Just because it seemed like a lot of people that, you know, when I got there onto fashion textiles, um, a lot of people were quite, you know, extra and edgy so that's like that's like my final tip but take it with a pinch of salt because it doesn't really matter that much that was just some tips about you know the interview process how it all works i think it's very different to your ucas you know traditional going to university pathway so i thought i'd just make it like a little video explaining it all thanks for watching